Hi, I'm the Lock Picking Cuba. I recently bought this Sesame lock from eBay, knowing nothing about it other than what it said on the listing, that it was a Polish lock made around 1980 and that it was unused and apparently a rarity. I'll show you how the lock works a bit later and I'll also pick it, but first I wanted to explain its history because uh, it's pretty fascinating. So, as best as I can tell, this lock was made in the 1980s in Poland by a company called Sesam, as it says on the lock. Um, it was founded by a guy called Alexander Gavronik, who, according to a Polish magazine, was the richest man in Poland in 1990. And then from 1993 to 1997, he was a senator in the Polish Senate. But decades before that, he'd been a member of the Polish United Workers' Party, and then briefly he worked in the economic crime section of Poland's security service. He just worked there for a few weeks. Apparently he said afterwards that he only worked there to find out what the security service had done to his father. Anyway, Gavronik later set up Sesame uh, to deal with the protection of people and property and organising the escort of valuable shipments or packages. And presumably that protection of people and property uh, included making this lock, among other things. It's not easy to find out if the Sesame company still exists or not. There is a company in Poland today called Sesame but it specialises in varnishes and paints and shows no obvious signs of a connection with Gavronik or with this lock. On the other hand, this company, Cezanne, was apparently set up over 30 years ago, which means it would have been around at the same time as Gavronik's identically named company, so it does seem possible that these are the same company. And actually, there is one small piece of evidence. So there's a registry of Russian companies which lists a company called Cezanne K NPF, founded in Moscow in 1992. And the registry lists the activities of that company as being locks and hardware and also paints and varnishes. In any case, what is clear is that no one has manufactured these locks for decades. And that explains why it's uh, currently very hard to find them for sale online. But now here's the really interesting part. I found two people who have an identical story about why this lock was created. You can hear it briefly from Skylar Town in his TED talk, which I'll link below. And I also found a forum post saying that Peter Field, the research director at Medico, gave a talk in which he told the same story. So Skylar slightly misdescribes the lock, as you'll see if you watch the video, but otherwise it's pretty clear that both he and Peter Field were talking about this lock. The story they tell is that in Soviet Poland, a law was passed requiring anyone who bought a lock to register the key with the local authorities. And this was obviously so that the police and other agencies could enter anyone's house quietly for whatever purposes they wanted. So apparently, Sazam created this lock as an act of defiance. The lock conformed with the law. It had a key that could be registered with the local authorities, which would open the lock. But it also had a surprise for anyone who tried to use that key, a combination lock with uh, four dials. And this wouldn't stop the police from getting into your house, of course, um, but it would buy you a few seconds to get ready. So the idea was that opening the lock would be slow and noisy, and just having a key wouldn't be enough. I've not been able to find anything that confirms that this story is true, but I really hope it is. So how does this lock work? Well, like I mentioned, there's a combination lock and a keyhole. The keys are kind of a little funny looking, but it's basically a standard pin tumbler lock. I'll pick it open a bit later. The combination dials are intended to be set using the tip of the key like this, but you could use you know, a thin coin or maybe even your fingernail if you wanted to. Um, but note these are pretty stiff, um, at least on this model, which is unused, so that may explain why. But it, it also might be that it's an intentional part of the design, just to make it a little slower and noisier to open, even if you do have the key and know the combination. So, the key operates fine if the dials are set to the right combination. So I can put this in and turn it and open the lock. But if you turn the dials to the wrong combination, so I'll just misset one of the dials, the key won't turn. It feels exactly as if you've put the wrong key into the lock. I found a Polish forum in which there were dozens of people reminiscing about their families having this lock on their apartment door when they were younger. Some people said they were a pain because you always had to dial the code before using the key, but others said the combination was basically irrelevant because people didn't bother to use it and just left it on the correct combination to save time. Changing the combination is a little bit tricky. So you set the dials to the current combination, you put the key in, and then there's this other device. Um, you could just use the key, except it's in the lock at this point, so they provide this device, which has a, a notch that isn't necessary as far as I can tell. Um, and what you do is you push down on one of the dials, and while pushing down, you turn the key just slightly, 
and that lets you push the dial in a little further. And while it's pushed in, you can turn it to the new value you want to set it to. And then when it pops up, that's the new value. So now the combination has a two there. And in the same way, I can put it back to zero. I've tried decoding this combination by um, putting tension on the key and feeling for gates in the dials, um, but I wasn't able to feel very much. On the other hand, picking the lock isn't very hard, which I'll show you in a second, but what does that matter? If the combination dials are scrambled, then picking the lock does you no good anyway. So from a security point of view, this lock is actually really good, as long as you can ignore the huge inconvenience involved in getting it open. Okay, let's get this in the vise and uh, see what it takes to pick it open. Now I've got all the dials set to zero, which is the correct combination. So we can just show that with the key. It's quite stiff to turn, even just the key. Um, and you need quite a lot of tension in there to pick it as well. Let's see, I'm gonna go with bottom of the keyway here, make it easier to see. Um, okay, there's nothing at all on one there. I think nothing on two. raking this and I've tried uh, comb attack as well and uh, I couldn't get anywhere with either of those so that was a good sign although I don't think there's any security pins it's a bit hard to tell I want to be careful not to scratch the keyhole here because it's you know an unused lock and stiff and I'm guessing deliberately <laughs> stiff um, and some of the springs in there are very heavy but it isn't too difficult to pick open um, as long as you have these combination dials set right I'm just wondering now what happens in this state if I try and move one of these yeah they won't turn okay that makes sense um, okay so there we go it's picking that open in any case, this has definitely become my favorite lock in my collection. I'd love to have some definitive confirmation of the history of it, but even given what I do know, it's clear that this lock is really a piece of Polish history and the mechanism is pretty unique as far as I know. So that's it for this video. If you uh, do know any more about the story of the lock or the company that made it, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear more about it. If you enjoyed this video, please tell your friends about it. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.